Hi everyone, it's me John Waits and welcome to my kitchen. Now I am a very keen baker, you may have heard it on the street. Baking for me is a very creative process. I'm not artistic in a traditional sense, I'm colour blind which doesn't help. But when it comes to baking, I can be as creative and fabulous and sassy as I want. And if it doesn't go right, you can eat your mistakes. Today I'm making a giant showstopper of a cake. It's a pride cake, it's a rainbow cake, it's got Italian meringue buttercream on there, and it's a bit of a beast, but break it down into steps, and actually, it's no more difficult than making a Victoria sponge. The first thing I want to do is weigh out the baking spread. This has got a higher moisture content than butter, and sugar is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture out of the atmosphere, so if you don't dissolve the sugar, it ends up turning to syrup as the cake bakes, and you end up with a very, very rubbery cake. But if you are a bit of a purist, you can use butter. Just make sure, 100% sure, that it's really, really soft. So, in with the baking spread. Caster sugar. I love to use golden caster sugar. I think it's got a lovely caramelly hint. But if you want to use white caster sugar, you can use white. And then to mix this, you could do it with a handheld electric mixer. But I am very proud of my mixer here. Quarantina Turner is her name, because I got her during lockdown. So I'm going to put her to good use. And if you want the recipe, and I'm sure you do, the link is in the video description. I often find that people don't dissolve the sugar in the baking spread enough, so leave this for a good few minutes. So we're going to have a scrape down the sides. It's a great way, obviously, of getting everything into the middle of the mixer, but also to see if there's any granulation of the sugar. You want the sugar to be really well mixed into the baking spread, and that pretty much is bang on. So, onto the eggs. Now, I'm going to crack the eggs into a bowl. Okay, the last one. While I've got them in the bowl, I may as well give them a beat. Okay. So I'm going to add the eggs gradually because I want to try and prevent this from splitting. But listen, if it splits, it splits. The world is not going to end because your cake batter split. And don't just add a spoonful of flour thinking, oh, I'll make it quicker. Because all you're going to do if you add a spoonful of flour is glutenize that flour. Okay, so I'm impressed, if I say so myself. The first step of the batter hasn't really split, so I'm now going to add salt. Salt really is important in cakes, not just for flavour, but also for browning. Okay, I'm going to add buttermilk to this and flour. So I'm going to alternate a third of the flour, half the buttermilk, a third of the flour, half the buttermilk, a third of the flour. And the reason I'm using buttermilk is because buttermilk is slightly acidic, so it's going to leave the cake lovely and moist, and actually this cake will last for a good week in the fridge. So I'm not going to fully incorporate the flour. As soon as it starts to look like a scraggy mess, which was me this morning, I'm going to add the rest of that buttermilk, and then finally, the last third of the flour. Beautiful. So thanks to that buttermilk, we've got the silkiest, most delicious batter you could ever ask for. And that is a fact. Now, I think it's time to break it to you that this cake has got six different coloured layers in it. So what I need to do is divide this mixture out between six. And I think if you're making a rainbow cake where you cut into it and you want people to go, <gasps> and, <gasps> and ooh, then you want to make sure that the cake layers are really even. So you have to weigh it. What I do is I weigh the bulk of the mixture and then I divide that by six. I've already done the maths. Call me Carol Vorderman. It's about 435 grams per layer. Perfect. So, maybe I'm not like Carol Vorderman because I've just worked out that the last bowl has only got 385 in there. If that happens to you, don't worry, it might just be because it's splashed around the bowl or it might be on the ceiling or all over you. Just take a little bit from each bowl and just even it out as best you can. Lovely. So I've got this fabulous little pack of rainbow cake colours. Now you'll notice that there are only five inside. What's missing is purple. Now from primary school days, I remember that purple is made by red and blue. So just fold it through until it's completely one colour. These might look a little bit wishy-washy at this stage, but as you bake a cake, moisture evaporates. And whenever moisture evaporates, things are concentrated, including colour. So they will intensify in the oven. So you might be sat there wondering where the colours of the pride flag come from. Originally, the flag symbolising the gay community was an upside down pink triangle, because that's what people in concentration camps, if they were gay or lesbian, had to wear on their clothes. So we reclaimed that and used that as our symbol for a very long time. I'm getting quite emotional talking about it. But in 78, a guy called Gilbert Baker invented the rainbow flag as we knew it, until recently, when it became even more inclusive, with an extra few colours on there. And that's to represent all the members of the LGBTQI plus community. So although I'm using a limited range of colours, this is made in honour of everyone. Okay, 
So I've got here my six cake tins, the grease and the lines, but at this stage, I want to offer you some reassurance. If you're panicking about the amount of tins I'm using, if you're panicking about the oven space, take a breath. It's fine. Do it in batches, half the recipe, do three at a time, and then do the other three. So I'm gonna scrape my cake batters into each tin. You might be asking, you might be wondering, what is pride? And it's a fair question. Pride is a celebration of love, basically. Whether you're gay, straight, bi, trans, everyone is welcome at pride. And although it's a celebration, it's also a reminder of the people in the world who are still persecuted or even killed because of the sexuality or gender. And it's paying homage to those people, those brothers and sisters who suffer simply because they exist. Now, to get this evenly spread, just work it to the edge of the tin. The last time I went to Pride was in 2019, and it was the most fabulous night of my life, not least because I was wearing a sequined bomber jacket and I rocked that, but because Ariana Grande performed, and it was one of her first performances since the Manchester bombing. Everyone was happy, everyone was emotional. It was one of the best nights of my life. Pride really is particularly important right now as we emerge from the lockdown and coronavirus because it's about coming back together. Isolation in the gay community and in the LGBTQI plus community is such a, a huge problem. So to see the world re-emerge and to see people come together again, it puts hope in the air. Okay, into the oven we go. So, a good cake needs a good buttercream, and I'm gonna make an Italian meringue buttercream. People are often afraid of this, and I understand why, but step by step, break it down, it's actually very, very simple. I'm gonna use Clarence Court Simply Egg White, comes in a tub, ready to go, and then to the egg, I'm gonna add a little bit of cream of tartare, and that'll help it to froth up. Froth, froth, froth. It'll help it to froth up. I'm gonna put the bowl on the mixer, but I don't wanna whisk the eggs just yet because I need to whisk those at a particular time. So, into my pan, I'm gonna add some sugar, along with a little bit of water. It's a lot less water than you think you're actually gonna need. While it's off the heat, I can give it a stir, but when this goes on the heat, and I'm gonna lower my voice to a more serious tone now because this is important. When this goes on the heat, you mustn't stir it because it could crystallize. So I'm gonna go on a high heat for this. And what I want to do is I want to cook this to the softball stage, which is 180. 18 degrees Celsius, 118. But once this gets to about 109, 110, I'm gonna turn my mixer on on the medium speed and just get those egg whites to be a kind of soft medium peak. And as soon as the sugar syrup gets to 118 degrees, pour the syrup down the side of the bowl and into the meringue in a thin, steady stream, just like that. I'm gonna crank up the speed, but I'm gonna to need to protect my ceiling, my face, my clothes from any splatter. So I'm gonna use this full speed ahead. This needs about 20 minutes to stiffen up and cool down. Oh, finally peace. Right, let's take a look how thick and glossy this meringue should be. It holds the whisk in place. All I need to do now then is to incorporate the butter. And it's really important that the butter is room temperature and diced. And just take chunks of the butter and on a medium high speed drop them into the meringue now as you add the butter the meringue will turn soupy don't think you've done something wrong because you haven't that's just part of the process it'll come back together and what's really important is that you add the butter and let it incorporate before you add the next lot of butter once it's thickened up again just let it whisk for a good four or five minutes just to pop plenty of air into that butter and make it super light and cloudy so, I'll leave the mixer running, and while I do that, I'm gonna split a vanilla pod, and then extract all the beans. If you want to, you could use vanilla extract, vanilla bean paste. Also, I'm now gonna add salt. And at last, we are done. Quarantina Turner, you've done me proud, babe. Okay, let's assemble the cake. <gasps> Look at that. The colors are so vibrant, absolutely perfect. I'm gonna stack this towering masterpiece up right now. To get the cakes really neat, I use the acrylic disc technique. So I've got here two acrylic discs. They're about eight and a quarter inch in diameter. So they're slightly bigger than the cake itself, because don't forget you need the cake, then you need a generous layer of buttercream. So what I'm going to do is with a little bit of damp kitchen roll, I'm gonna pop one of the acrylic discs onto the center of my turntable and then I'm taking a 20 centimeter cake card and I'm going to then carefully place this into the center of that acrylic disc so you can see a tiny little lip on the outside of the cake and that's really important because that will be our buttercream layer. 
Now, very important thing when you're making a towering cake like this is those cakes want to go all over the place. So stick them down with a little blob of your buttercream. And then I use an ice cream scoop or a food scoop, whatever you want, just to make sure that you portion the buttercream on top of the cake. And that way you don't have one big layer, one little layer, where you've got perfect layers all the way through the cake. So on the turntable, work the buttercream towards the edges of the cake. I can then turn the turntable as I really stiffen up with the palette knife. When you work it this way, the buttercream becomes level. The key thing is to make sure that they are stacked on top of each other, but don't worry if they're wonky and funky. Everyone's welcome at Pride, even the wonky cakes. Now, as you're building this up, if you notice that it's starting to wobble around a little bit, just pop it in the freezer for five, 10 minutes, and that'll help to firm up all that buttercream and make it much more support. What I'm gonna do now is add what's called the crumb layer. So it's a very, very thin layer of buttercream, and all that's gonna do is just trap any cake crumbs so that when I come to finish the cake off with the rest of the buttercream, I don't have loads of crumbs floating all over the place and making it look mucky. And it doesn't matter if the cake edges are exposed slightly, so long as they're kind of mysteriously veiled underneath the buttercream, okay? This now needs to go into the freezer for a good 15 minutes. I'm now gonna finish the cake off, but before I do, I've got here the second acrylic disc and a piece of baking paper, which I've just cut to a slightly smaller disc than the acrylic disc itself. So four blobs of buttercream and one in the middle, and then place the sheet of baking paper on there like that. Now, take a generous blob of buttercream and just spread the buttercream out in the same way as I did before when I was layering the cake up. And then, for the magic, I'm gonna take the second piece of acrylic baking paper side down, and then just press this fairly firmly, and that will squish that top layer of buttercream and make it level. And then, just to make sure that the acrylic discs are aligned, take a square. Now, this is just a square cake tin base. So long as it's sharp and right-angled, you're good to go. So if I've got this against the cake tin, you can see that it ain't touching the top acrylic disc. So slide that disc over, and do that all the way around the cake. And what I find the best thing to do to stick that top layer is just to create a vacuum. So bring the buttercream up. Don't worry at this stage if the top's not level, we can sort that out later. One thing at a time. So I've got a decent layer of buttercream on there. So I'm now gonna take that square and I'm holding it not too firmly against the acrylic. And can you see how it's starting to set that buttercream into a really sharp edge? And all the excess is gathered onto the square. So all you then need to do is spread it back. It's like plastering, and I'm sure you've all done that. And if, of course, you don't have acrylic discs and you can't get hold of them, you can do this by eye. A few final scrapes, and I think this baby will go in the freezer. And if anything, you're gonna have a jolly good time doing this because it's really good fun. Okay, a few little imperfections here and there, but on the whole, I'm pretty happy. In fact, no, I'm ecstatic. It's beautiful. So the cake's been in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes, or in the fridge for an hour. It depends on where you've got space for it. And all I'm gonna do now is take the top layer of acrylic off. So with a sharp knife, I'm gonna try and release the acrylic from the baking paper first, and then find the edge of the baking paper and peel that back. Now, try and get that top to look a little bit neater. So keep the palette knife level and turn the cake stand. And then to make sure that top edge is neat, bring the palette knife in to the center from the outside. And then I do like a spirally flourish. So spin it round and shave it to the edge. So now all I need to do is put the frock on. Ready for the party. I've got here a lovely selection of sprinkles and I've put the cake above a roasting tray so that when I tap these around the bottom edge of the cake, any of that fall are caught in the tray. Beautiful. Now for the chocolate dripping. So I've melted the chocolate with a little bit of oil. That's just to make it much more fluid and to make it set with a bit more of a shine. So I'm gonna squeeze the piping bag around the edge. And if you change the pressure, you'll get a different size drip. The key thing is to make sure there's some residual chill in that cake. So squeeze and alternate pressure with each drip. A little one there, a big one there. Go all the way around. I'm gonna get some of these roasting tray sprinkles and I'll just sprinkle a neither liberal nor moderate amount just around that top edge there. And that conceals that kind of scraggy chocolate border. Okay, the chocolate seems to be set, so all I need to do now is luster it up. So I'm gonna use pump spray luster. I'm gonna unscrew it and use it in its powdery form. So with a clean paintbrush, just dunk it in and then gently sweep that over the chocolate. It doesn't matter if you don't get the entire drip, just a little line of luster down the middle makes all the difference. So a few final touches here and there. I'm so happy. But I wanna cut into this because as beautiful as it is on the outside, the real spectacle is of course that rainbow flag, okay? The moment of truth. 
Oh, yes. How amazing! If that is not a rainbow, well, I don't know what is. And whether or not you make the cake, I want to wish each and every one of you love, safety, and happiness.